Thank you, everybody. Uh, I just want to, uh, again, just apologize for the fact that we don't have a sign language interpreter here today. Uh, we learned that none are available today, so we'll be posting a video with captions and uh, ASL interpretation, as well as a text transcript online for anyone uh, who wants to, who wants to uh, hear the pre or watch the press conference. Uh, before I begin, I just want everyone's thoughts and prayers for a Boston police officer this morning who was seriously injured um, in a crash in Dorchester. Uh, myself and Commissioner Gross went to visit him and his family uh, in the hospital today. His injuries are serious, um, and both he and his family uh, need our prayers right now in the city. Um, the latest COVID numbers as of yesterday in the state, 1,629 new cases, bringing a total in the state to 158,937. Uh, there were 27 new deaths reported yesterday in the Commonwealth, bringing the total of deaths in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to 9,836. Um, in Boston, yesterday we had 120 new confirmed cases, bringing our total to 21,395 from the beginning of COVID-19. Uh, we had three deaths yet registered yesterday, bringing our debt total to 874. Uh, and our prayers are uh, with the families of those sick and suffering with COVID-19, as well as the families who lost loved ones due to COVID-19. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, a positive test rate came down somewhat to 7.2%. We increased testing, and at the same time, we saw fewer total positive tests. So we, we want to be able to get a, a more accurate number of exactly where uh, COVID-19 is here in the city of Boston. Uh, that was a good sign, and we want to keep it going as far as bringing that rate down. Uh, but we still have lots of work to do here in the city and the Commonwealth. Uh, in our neighborhood data, Dorchester, Mattapan, and East Boston remain above 10% positivity rate. Our average daily positive test came down as well, but it's still more than 120 cases per day. If you remember last week, I think we're at 125 cases per day. Over a five-day average, we're at 120 now. I want to thank everyone who's been tested recently for COVID-19. Uh, after launching our Get the, Test Boston, uh, Get the Test Boston campaign, we saw an 8% increase in the number of people being tested last week. Uh, that's going to make a big difference in helping us move forward, uh, and it's also going to uh, help us to try and get a real accurate understanding of where we are with COVID-19 here in Boston. So please get tested. Uh, when you get tested, uh, we have uh, stickers. I got tested, kind of like voting stickers, so you can have a whole collection of them. Hopefully, the more you get, uh, we'll come up with some type of competition to get tested as much as possible. We'll figure that out next week. Uh, our mobile testing sites are free and open to all, regardless of symptoms. Uh, they, this week and next week, our mobile testing sites are going to be in East Boston, in Central Square Park, and in Mattapan at Jubilee Christian Church. Uh, I want to thank our partners at the East Boston Health Center and the Whitt Whittier Street Health Center uh, for helping us with this. Since launching them in May, our mobile testing sites have administered nearly 14,000 tests in the city of Boston, all across in different neighborhoods, from Roxbury to Alston to Southie to Mattapan to East Boston to Dorchester. Uh, so it's good to see that people going out and getting tested. I encourage the press in front of me uh, to get tested if you haven't been tested as well. Uh, we're asking you to, uh, if you want to find more information out about testing, visit boston.gov slash coronavirus or call 311 to learn more about these sites as well as the 30 additional testing sites we have in Boston. So it's the two mobile sites plus the 30 additional sites. Uh, please continue to be vigilant and be safe and help us stop the spread of COVID-19. We're asking people to continue to wear face coverings whenever you're outside your home. Uh, the governor put that order in place, so whenever you walk out of your home, if you could wear face coverings. Uh, we want people to continue to wash your hands frequently with warm water and soap. Wipe down surfaces that might be frequently touched, doorknobs, car knobs, car handles, and uh, if you're working in work, your workspaces, all of that, you want to keep them nice and clean. We're asking people to avoid parties and other gatherings with, with people you don't know, or people you kind of socialize with right now, because we want to make sure that everyone stays safe. And please learn how to follow the new state advisories that go into effect. They'll be in effect tomorrow, actually. The mask order is not in effect today, but we're asking people, we've been asking people from the very beginning to continue to, to wear masks. Uh, tomorrow, um, what will go into effect tomorrow, those who might have missed it, uh, wearing a face covering at all times in public spaces, a stay-at-home advisory from 10 p.m. till 5 a.m., a closing time for in-person businesses of 9.30, we are reaching out to businesses to help provide with that information and so they can support these rules and how we can help them support these rules. 
In the meantime, anyone who wants to find any any new regulation or res not restriction, but maybe some restrictions that are in there, uh, boston.gov slash reopening or call 311 if you have any questions. Uh, our election team, an election update, our election team continues to count every vote. They started counting in advance last Wednesday, as I reported yesterday. We are now processing all the ballots that were received since Tuesday night. That includes mail-in ballots that were postmarked by Tuesday that are arriving in the mail, and we're going to accept those up until Friday, tomorrow. Ballots from overseas and military members can, can, uh, will be counted. Uh, they have the ability to arrive by, by November 13th, so on November 13th, at close of business day, that's when we will stop um, accepting those ballots. Uh, as long as it's been postmarked by November 3rd. Uh, as I said yesterday, and, and she was here, I want to thank the election commissioner again and, and the election department for in, their incredible work. It was another one Boston moment. Uh, our election staff and volunteers uh, made it possible for many thousands of Bostonians to vote safely uh, using unprecedented variety of access points. Uh, under unique circumstances, we came together to conduct a fair, accessible, and safe election here in the city of Boston. It reminded us of something about our democracy that we can, can't, cannot be forgotten amidst the political uh, unrest, if you will, in recent years. Elections take a lot of hard work and dedication. As we watch on TV and scroll our phones and computers for election results, we're seeing dedicated public servants and community members all across our country doing the work for our democracy. Many of them are volunteers. Right now at the forefront of our TVs is Arizona and Nevada. George and Pennsylvania. Many of those folks, and I was watching reports last night, they're working their hearts out to make sure that every single vote gets counted and the will of the people prevail. In some jurisdictions, they are doing this work under tremendous pressure and even threats. Both here in Boston and across the country, they are certainly heroes of our democracy, and we thank them. Just like the essential worker at the beginning of the pandemic, it's often the people that we don't understand are actually the heroes that do this work. Their work will continue across this nation until every single vote is counted, and I want to thank them from behalf of the people of Boston to all those workers in, in election departments all across this country. Thank you for your work. I continue to ask everyone for your patience while we await the national results, and I ask everyone who's speaking out joining demonstrations to do so peacefully and safely, and yesterday in Boston was a great example of that. We're asking people also, if you're out um, demonstrating, uh, wear a face covering, follow the guidelines that are in place to protect yourself and other people around you. This certainly is a historic moment for our country. We show what kind of country we want to be by the way we act and speak at these moments. That means standing up and speaking out for what is right, that also means showing love and respect for our community and for each other. We certainly have a lot of work to do to heal our nation. We have work to do to end systemic racism. We have work to do to provide more equitable opportunities. We have work to do to provide more affordable housing, creating good jobs. Many people during this pandemic have lost their jobs and they're struggling right now on where their next paycheck is going to come from or where their next job is going to be. We're working to improve our transit. We're working to fight climate change. We have to get through this pandemic and come out a more equitable and resilient city on the other side. We can only do that work if we continue to work together as a community. My hope is that we'll be moving in that positive direction as a nation very soon. In the meantime, we have to keep showing what it, what it can look like here in the city of Boston. With that, I'll open up to any questions. Shaman. Yeah, the question, um, I, I don't always do this, I forgot to do this yesterday. The question uh, is, uh, do we anticipate having to, having to take any further action, if you will, in shutting things down? Um, I'm hopeful we don't have to do that. I mean, I think with what we've been doing here in the city of Boston with the increase in testing, uh, what, we, what we've done by not moving into the next phase of the reopening plan, uh, by working with the state on what, they, what they're starting tomorrow, hopefully we can see over the course of the next two or three weeks, we can see, start to see those numbers come down. Uh, so that the infection rate gets lower, not higher. So that's our intention. Um, unfortunately, if it keeps going up, we'll have to deal with that at that point. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
we did was we, we announced a, a team that's going to lead mar a marketing campaign to help showcase Boston as a safe destination for local travel. It's not going to have an immediate impact, but it's building up as we think about the holidays and head into early next year. How do we make sure that Boston, as long as we're safe, can be highlighted as a safe city to bring back the tourism industry? Uh, we hired a team um, from um, the Greater Boston Convention, Convention Center and Visitors Bureau, um, Colette Phillips Communications, uh, to work on this. We want to encourage diversity, uh, certainly local visitors to explore the rich history of our city. Uh, we, we know that the COVID pandemic has certainly uh, been tough on our tourism industry here in Boston, but what we want to be able to do is, is come, out of, come out of this quicker. We want to come out of where we are quicker. We've seen, um, you've reported, many of you reported, that the industry, the, the, the hotel industry that's been hit the hardest due to COVID has been the Massachusetts, Boston industry. So we want to be able to come out of that faster. Yeah, I'm not sending the message today. We're going to be sending the message. We're going to be building a message, and we're going to be marketing as we're getting safer. So it, there's, a, there's, there's a, more than just marketing the city as a safe place. It's also managing the COVID-19 numbers. So we work, we're working collectively together. Oh, let me just, is that good? Our neighborhoods, the diversity of our neighborhoods and, and our restaurants in our neighborhoods. Uh, many of our neighbors now have small hotels and inns in them, and we want to make sure that, that those business opportunities uh, get saved as well. Many of these different areas we're concerned about. Uh, we're concerned about hotels being built like around the, in the border of Southie. Uh, in Roxbury, we have a new hotel. Uh, we have hotels in the South End. We have hotels in other places. So it's not just the big business bringing back. It's trying to help these smaller businesses as well as the restaurants in those areas. Sorry. All right. We're not holding off. We launched it today, so we're going to be working together collectively on what the messaging is going to be. So it's not like Monday morning we're going to wake up and start marketing the city. Some work has to happen before we market the city. It's, we're going to be looking at the different areas of how, how do we market the city, what's the timeline to market the city. Obviously, at, with a 7.8% with a infection rate, and I mean, it dropped a little bit this week, but let's assume we continue to rise. Uh, this would not be the appropriate time to market the city, but we're, gonna, we're preparing for the inevitable that we will be able to market the city. No, it's still under investigation. It's still, we'll, we'll, as soon as we get the information out to, as soon as we get the information, we'll get it out to everyone. Yeah, it's a serious condition right now, so we're asking people to pray for him. I need to jump on that one. Uh, but, well, where, where the coronavirus increase are coming from? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, so what we see in our contact tracing that we're doing and the investigations of cases um, is, again, they're not coming from just one place. There's not just one uh, scenario, but it's a lot of scenarios. It includes uh, people going, who are still going to work, then who are coming home to their house with multiple generations, living in living multi-generational homes who are infecting other people in their houses. We see folks having small gatherings uh, in their home, which they might seem as gatherings, but three, four, five people. Um, we see folks getting it from being out and about um, in different locations. So it's not just one place. It's sort of cutting across. So I think really the message is we need everyone to continue to think about the face covering, the social distancing, not being around lots of people at one time, um, and doing everything that we did in the summer where we really did keep it um, at bay, but needing to remind ourselves that we need to do that now more than ever, especially as it gets cold outside. Yeah, so the question is, what would our message be around Thanksgiving and holidays in general since uh, we just saw one holiday? Um, we're going to be doubling down on messaging really related to only being around folks that you live with that are in your home, not spending time with extended family um, in, in, in quarters where you can socially distance yourself. I mean, it's really hard. We're having to ask folks to make sacrifices, not spending time with those they want to spend time with, which is very difficult. But one of the things we're going to do through the Public Health Commission is really push out messaging around how to celebrate the holidays um, and live with COVID at the same time. So more virtual gatherings, less in-person opportunities, but really do everything we can to keep folks safe, especially older Bostonians who will be at greater risk for the spread.
Thank you. I, I think that it goes back to what Shaman asked. I, I think that everything's on the table, but we're hoping with uh, some of the regulations that have come down from the state and what we're doing here in the city, we're able to get the numbers down. I mean, the reality of the situation is if, if we don't get our numbers down, our daily testing numbers down and our daily positivity rate down, uh, then we might have to take further action. And I think that that further action, everything's on the table at that point. What we don't want a situation is what we experienced back in March and April, where we literally had to shut everything down. I mean, it was just, you know, that everything was shut down completely. And we've just begun to open up, when I say just begun, over the last several months now, businesses and people coming back to work and, uh, you know, school, we want to get schools back up going, colleges. All of this is, is on the table. If we don't get our infection rate down and we start to see that continue to climb to a point where we have to shut it down, we'll have to. But the intention is now to really everyone to take this virus seriously. So good where the election is today. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of, you know, we, we all want to call. Like, I want to call today. You know, obviously, I'm looking forward to that calling. I want to see fireworks in Wilmington, Delaware. But, um, well, uh, you know, every vote has to be counted. And what, what's really remarkable when you think about the pandemic, how it's really changed in a very positive way, access to voting. Um, you know, uh, the country, we didn't set a record here in Boston, but I think the country set a record for presidential election votes, which is great to see. Um, you know, but people, everyone had many different opportunities to vote in different ways, and that takes a long time to count. I mean, when you think about it, and everyone's system is different. I was watching one of the talk shows last night, and everyone's system's different. You know, I think it was Pennsylvania, you couldn't count the early votes till after the, after the election, after the polls closed. Here in Boston, uh, as I mentioned uh, yesterday at 6 o'clock on election night, I was asking the, the elections commissioner, I was assuming that we had all these ballots we still have to count, we weren't going to get numbers back until, you know, yesterday. And she said by 6 o'clock we had them all counted because the Massachusetts allowed people to count during the day. So we were able to, having that opportunity really made a difference. These other counties, they're different. I mean, it's like the state. We all have different rules and regulations on how we do the election. So we just have to be patient um, on, on the results. I mean, and, and, you know, watch. You don't know what's going to happen in an election. You know, there's some states that, um, that Joe Biden's in play on today that he wasn't in play with yesterday. Uh, and again, it's about votes and early votes and, and the way that these states um, put their rules and regulations together. And um, that's what makes it unique, even with the Electoral College. I mean, I think it was uh, Nebraska and, um, and, and Maine. You know, you win the state, you don't necessarily get the Electoral College. You, there's a couple congressional districts. So it, it, it's a unique, uh, it makes our democracy unique, put it that way. No, I, I have no reaction to his tweets. I'm going to come back to you in a second. The, um, as I just mentioned, November 13th, we're going to receive ballots here probably on November 13th. They're going to come from overseas. Those will come from military men and women. There's rules in place, postmarks in place. In Boston and Massachusetts, as long as your ballot's postmarked by November 3rd, and it gets to an election department by a particular date, those ballots are valid. I think that if you look at these, these, these states around the country where the, the president is trying to make those claims, if they're not accurate claims, um, and, and what I want people to do right now is let's not get caught up in tweets. Let's, if you have, want to find information about what's happening in other states and other elect election departments, I would suggest you go on the website and you Google, learn what their rules and regulations are. I know that everyone's working hard. Many of these states are run by Republican governors. Uh, that there, there's still uncertainty in the results. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, Georgia, Arizona uh, are both Republican governors. Um, that, you know, so it's not a Democrat Republican thing. It's a thing of letting, letting time in so people can, uh, can get the votes counted. And I mean, putting that type of uncertainty out there is just wrong. Um, on, on the, on the um, tourism campaign, what we want to do ultimately is help businesses. Uh, recover. We want to be able to show in different areas um, the diversity of the businesses, the diversity of the food, the diversity of the parts of our city. This is a $2 million project that's funded by the CARES Act. Um, that's the, the relief funding that we got from the federal government. Um, this, we, we know that we're in a 
very interesting position right now where it comes to coronavirus, but we want to get ahead of um, and, and come up with a plan on when we can reopen safely, completely op reopen, that we'll have a plan in place to market the city. Um, it's no different than that other cities and states around America. Sometimes you'll be home watching a TV and you'll see a campaign ad about New York State or whatever it might be. And we want, what we want to do is put down the found, lay down the foundation now with a team of people that are going to put a lot of thought into how do we market our city that we're going to come back stronger and safer and open up. That's the intention behind uh, the tourism campaign. I don't know. I'll get that to you. I just announced it today, so I, I'll get the whole thing. Probably not the end of the year. I'd probably say, I, I, again, let me, let, me, let me get it to you. I'll get all the information to you. Shutting down further. Are we like a couple bad weeks away? No, I, I mean, again, I, I think we, we, had, we had about 12, 14 weeks of 1.2 to 2.8 percent testing. Uh, we had the last five weeks, we saw a steady incline for five consecutive weeks, maybe six consecutive weeks. And then this week, we saw a, a, a little bit of a de decrease. So we're going to be watching these numbers very closely as we continue to move forward. Uh, I don't want to put panic in people right now. There shouldn't be, there's no need for panic. Uh, what there is need for is us to, to wear our masks, to physical distance, to do all the things that we have to do to keep ourselves healthy. If we do that, then there's no need to shut down. If we don't do that, then we're going to be in a very different situation, and this will be a very different press conference. Anything else? All right, everyone, get tested.